Welcome to the Contemplative Life. Three pastors, friends, and spiritual companions help us explore spirituality through a contemplative lens. I'm Christina Roberts. I'm Chris Roberts. I'm Christina Kaiser. We're glad you joined us. Hello, it is great to be with you. Today, we are talking about limiting mindsets. Now, this could be anything from self-doubt, uh, perhaps it's our inner critic or feeling like an imposter. Maybe there's an area in our life where we feel stuck. Basically, any sort of thoughts that we tend to have that muddy up our discernment. And I have found that limiting mindsets are areas that we return to over and over again in our lives. I think any time that we are growing or changing, we tend to butt up against these limiting mindsets, and it tends to be an invitation for us to explore a little bit deeper, maybe an awareness or where these things come from in order to press forward into the new things that God has from us. Now, again, depending on what circles you swim in, some people call this limiting beliefs. Uh, in faith circles, sometimes this might be called like a lack of faith. Um, but essentially it's these mindsets that we're talking about today. So, um, as I bring this up, I'd love to just hear your thoughts on limiting mindsets and what comes up for you today. Well, it's such a great topic. And I think initially when you first hear it, it kind of comes out of nowhere. And sometimes you can think, do I have any of those? I'm not really sure. And so while we probably have all of these possibilities that you were naming, like, oh, do I have an inner critic? Am I doubtful of myself? Uh, do I feel like an imposter? Probably there's one that makes it easier for you to find based on personality, like, even though you probably have the whole spectrum. Um, so for me and my personality, because I tend to shape shift and be a little bit of like, oh, I'll be whatever you want me to be, feeling like an imposter is going to be the easiest place for me to kind of slide in and start thinking about it. And then after that, find my way into a little deeper spot of, and how else does this play out in my life? Um, so I just thought I'd throw that in there. Yeah. I think for me, the thing that I hear in this is the common thread is resistance where we, where we run up to, uh, against something in our lives. And uh, so whether it's, you know, imposter syndrome, I think for me, the last time I, uh, encountered imposter syndrome was resistance that I was feeling. So I, I was in a spiritual direction school and the, the thing that they're teaching is listening. And I've always been a great storyteller and I found myself struggling to listen to other people's stories with an attentiveness. And so it's like, what the heck am I doing here? trying to listen, learn to listen. And so for me, the theme is like, whenever we run up against some resistance in our life, um, mindset, imposter syndrome, I think for me, those are the themes that, that come up with mindsets. It's just whenever we encounter resistance. And I see it specifically with my kids, right? Anytime there's any resistance, I can't do this. This is too hard. Like these limiting beliefs, um, and so how do I help them overcome or how to help my, myself overcome whenever there's resistance? So that's what, that, that's what I think of. Yeah. And I think like anything in life, there's tends to be a, a spectrum of limiting mindsets. And so sometimes there's deeper ones that maybe come up in a spiritual direction session or something that's a little bit deeper, but I'm even thinking of like sometimes negative type things where, um, for example, we, we live in Wisconsin and it's, we have really cold winters. And so even like statements, like I hate being cold. I can't wait till winter, or I'm, I'm sorry, I can't wait till spring comes, or I'm going to be miserable until spring comes to me. That's a limiting mindset of you've limited your ability to enjoy the winter months and are anticipating that you won't be happy until spring comes. And so even little things like that, we're learning well, as I'm aware of that, how do I change that mindset to be, I live in a cold climate and what's it going to look like for me to embrace that? Yes, I can enjoy spring as well and look forward to that, but that doesn't mean that I have to be miserable. And so I think it can come up in those small ways or some of the more deeper types as well. I love what both of you are saying. Um, I moved back to the the you know frigid cold about the same time as another friend from high school and i've noticed on her social media post that she's had these like embracing winter and she's learning to cross country ski and curl and ice skate as like she is embracing winter oh my gosh but that really is the name of the game right so how what can i do 
to embrace all of this. And and Chris, I, I also love what you're saying around like somehow, I mean, and maybe I'm interpreting too much of you, so I hope that's not true. But the heart says, I care about people and I want to care about them in this way, right? I'm, so I'm gonna go to spiritual direction school. And the mind then is like, no, why would you ever do that? This like disconnect between the heart and the mind seems to be playing into it, which is an interesting and meaningful observation. Yeah, and I think, you know, we say, well, I am good at this. I'm good at telling stories, but I am not good at this, right? And so I, comparison happens as well. Like we, whenever we're, there's a struggle, we are running up against that resistance. Oftentimes the challenge is to stay with it and like to learn and to grow. Like growth is, is, is very challenging. It, it requires uh, a steadfastness. It requires you to, to reach beyond where you're currently at, even with your mindsets, right? Reaching beyond and imagining something different. I, I can listen to people. I can practice this notion of hearing their stories, being attentive to, uh, yes, I am a great storyteller, but I think I can also envision being a, a spiritual director where I, I sit with people's stories. So, you know, I think that's, that's also something that I, I think is that we can be aware of. And I like that because it's not like I'm this. And then we jump to the there, you know, like we're naming and claiming, like all of a sudden now I'm a great storyteller or, you know, for me, I've always been a shy person as a kid, I was extremely shy. And so that's always been my limiting mindsets that I'm having to overcome, but it's not like, okay, now I'm going to be outgoing or talk to people or overcome things. It's these slow and steady incremental things. And so sometimes even in transforming our mindsets, it's not so much about just choosing the opposite thing and claiming that, but what sort of some steps that I can take along the way of, yes, I am this, or I tend to lean towards this. And I'm also going to give this a try. Or, you know, I, I noticed last week that I went out of my comfort zone and introduced myself to a new person that I hadn't known before. And it went okay. And that gives me confidence to try again versus now I'm going to be this outgoing non-shy person. So Again, I like what you're saying. It kind of reminds me of, you know, when you have braces, you can't straighten your teeth in one setting. Like it's over the course of months with adjustments and a little bit at a time to go from your crooked teeth to your straight teeth. And I think a lot of times with our mindsets, it's that slow and steady process that you're describing. Yes, absolutely. And it can feel a bit torturous is the thing, right? So if I think of some of my own struggles, I'll tend to think like, oh, life is so busy, right? And I have no control because this moment dictates this in my life and this moment and therefore I have no control but you know there's been little ways little practices to be able to feel like no there's these other spaces in the day so on the lower end I can make a list right and I can check things off and I can put them on certain days or I can create a calendar on you. So these are like little things, but sometimes even just sitting with another human and letting them ask the reflective questions that help me to open it up and see my life a little bit differently. And because it's a limiting belief, right? I can kind of fix it, if you will, like I can get in a good headspace and then it can come back and I have to do more work, which is frustrating, but more helpful to be able to do that with another human, not to feel like I'm all hungered and alone and I can't ever get anything right in the whole bit. So, which is probably another limiting belief. <laughs> and Christina, I think it's important to name that we are always going to have limiting beliefs. So we are going to go back to things because hopefully we're growing and evolving and changing, which requires us revisiting things. And we're at a different point on that limiting mindset. We, we've grown to a certain level in that. And typically there's always room for even more of that. So I, I think even what you're naming that, yeah, we do. And I love like having someone sort of draw that out in us is so key. Yeah. I think one of the things that I've found helpful too, is personally, like one of my ways that I've limited myself in a negative way is like, around beverages and food. And it's like, if I, if I don't have this, I'm not going to be happy. And I say that as I have three different beverages surrounding me right now, <laughs> coffee, sparkling water, more coffee. But, you know, I think if I don't have these things, I'm going to be, I, I'm not, I'm not going to have a fulfilled life. I need these things to, to, to be happy. And one of the things that I begin to, to think of is uh, I'm, I'm approaching 50 and my thing that I'm envisioning is at 50, I want to be healthier than I was at 40. 
And so I'm, I'm projecting that at 50, I'm going to be in better shape. Uh, I'm going to be able to do more out activities with my kids. And so I think for me, like projecting what you want to be is very helpful to mindsets. And so I'm projecting my 50 year old self. I'm looking towards my 50 year old self and I'm in better shape than I was when I was 40. And so therefore I'm eliminating some things in my life that whenever I used to think, oh, I need, I need that to be happy or to, to have joy in my life. Instead of thinking that, I'm actually thinking, oh, I want to go for a walk because my 50-year-old self is going to be healthier than my 40-year-old self. So I think that's also helpful as we think about mindset. Yeah, I like that because it comes from a place of possibility versus deprivation, which always seems like a helpful space to be in. Yeah, I think so too. I love that notion. And you know, in thinking even back to when we're able to process with another human, when, when somebody says like, oh, you're just, for instance, like I had somebody once say, you're just so good at flow. And that felt very different from, I'm a busy frazzled mess, right? <laughs> like, and so someone else naming something that they can see in you that you can't necessarily see, can even help with this idea that gives you an image that you weren't even able to have for yourself before. So big fan of those companions. One of the things I hear us saying is, is you need companions along the way to name and to draw out, to help you to identify. And, you know, I think it was, sitting with some of these, these limiting beliefs and being able to retell it to another person or them retell it to me. I think what I just heard you say is if you're not experiencing this uh, enough that you're not going to be happy or fulfilled and, you know, somebody being with you in in the journey, uh, I think companions are super helpful along the way. So one way that we want to offer a companion that's maybe not a person is, you know, I know for me, when I was first learning about these idea of limiting mindset, it's like, okay, well, I don't even know where to begin. And so we have created a PDF with just some examples, right? This is obviously not an exhaustive list of every single limiting mindset, but sometimes having some samples, it's like, oh, I, you know, I can go through that and maybe circle some things that I resonate with, and then even personalize what that means for me. So if you would like that, we invite you to um, click next to this recording here, there'll be a PDF download that you can uh, look at. And then if you feel like, you know what, this has brought up some stuff that I think would um, benefit some deeper exploration, we would love that too. And so if that's you, um, please reach out to us at info at the contemplative life.net. And we would be happy to schedule a session with you and process through what that might look like. Thanks so much for a generative conversation on limiting mindsets today. On that note, let us transition to the part of our podcast where we talk about what we are into this week. So what are we into? Well, I have been into refugee resettlement. So I have been collecting goods and items and uh, I've engaged in this activity with my kids who have gone on websites and purchased Uh, everything that a home would need uh, to make someone feel welcome and comfortable. And it all came to fruition not too long ago where me and my daughter got to take all this stuff and put it in their home and set things up. And uh, I have been into refugee resettlement and I've been able to do it with my kids and it's been so fun. Um, And we actually got to participate with uh, several other organizations, churches, um, communities. And so it was it was super fun. And uh, I've been into it, but I'm also looking forward to that chapter being closed. Yes, it is quite the process to do that. And it, it was really neat to see different people from our communities come together for that. So what a great thing to be into. Um, so I'm going to jump off of Christina's friend who is embracing winter and I am into ice castles. Um, there is a few cities in the United States and one of them happens to be Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, which is just you know under two hours from Madison where uh, they have these ice castles. And I've never been before, but after this podcast, um, it 
you know, I think about a half an hour after the podcast is done recording today is when the tickets go on sale. So I'm hoping that our family can go. Uh, we have like these random days off during the winter. I don't know what it is with our school districts, but all of a sudden in the middle of January, you'll have a, a Monday off and it's not a national holiday. So I thought, well, let's just take one of these random school days and go see the ice castles. So that is what I'm into this week. Very exciting. Uh, I am into something extremely practical. <laughs> I am into slow cooker meals for this week. So it's really a very specific thing, but we just had so many things going on that I thought, you know what? This is a week for the slow cooker where you put it in, you walk away and you come back and it's magically done. So this is the week of the slow cooker. Ooh, I love me some slow cooker. That's good. We just slow cooked some venison not too long ago and it was nice. amazing. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. If you enjoy listening to the podcast, we invite you to sign up for our bi-weekly newsletter. Um, you can find the link in the show notes or at the contemplativelife.net. Until next time, make it a great week. Mm -hmm.